needs to win it. He stood up really well, Duffield, and that was well played to Crowley. Touch play on. Play on! Oh. Five, Mzungu. So another shot on Pierce, I know, but Mzungu's been terrific early. That is their first goal in a grand final. You're not going to forget Mzungu, are we? to go, good aggressive play, not such a good kick, well Hill spilled it, Blair, died at, inside the forward 50, oh wonderful, Mazunga. Welcome back everyone. Uh, I think we're at episode 26 now of The Athlete's Mind. I um, just want to say a quick thank you for all the recent support. You guys have been amazing. A lot of you have been asking what's happened with the uh, footy episode. So um, yeah, today we have Tendai Mazungu on, um, former AFL player for the Fremantle Dockers and GWS. Um, so yeah, Tendai, thank you for coming on. Um, how are you doing today? Well, thanks Anthony. Yeah, thanks for having me on the show. That's, it's, um, yeah. yeah, 26 episodes. Yep. It's going well, it's going strong. Hopefully this one doesn't we we have a few um Frio supporters um following so i think they'll be happy to see this one so um yeah the first thing we always ask our athletes when they come on is a bit of backstory how did you actually get into playing footy what has the journey sort of looked like from the start to now uh well, i've always loved um footy i've always loved sport really grew up around um grew up in melbourne and played pretty much anything that was going into athletics um as a young as a young boy, played uh, a bit of cricket, uh, played netball, um, tennis, whatever it was going. So um, footy was kind of always a thing I um, was probably best at, but I'd love going, or I loved it. Every winter I'd footy season, I'd get a new footy for my birthday and then, um, yeah, sort of just naturally evolved from there, but a bit of a sport, sporting background. Out of the other sports, which one did you sort of focus on the most? Uh, you mentioned netball, cricket, athletics. Uh, well, summertime when I was probably to the age of 12, I did athletics and then, um, which I, which I enjoyed, but I probably never, I was never super good at. Um, and then cricket, a lot of cricket, um, yeah. started at about 13 and, uh, I was just, yeah, when it was summer, I loved cricket and footy, didn't, didn't get the footy out until, mm. you know, Feb and then sort of was all footy. So, um, they were kind of, I played footy, uh, cricket right up until I was the year before I drafted, I think. Which is 23, so um, yeah, sort of the two main sports that took over. And were there any like junior memorable moments you have? Doesn't even have to be from footy, like grand finals or anything like that. Um, oh, but I played, I played a few years at Belmont Bombers, and that was sort of when I first came over to, to Perth from Melbourne. And I don't know, I just loved the club. It was um, yeah, had a good few good years there, and um, yeah, we didn't get a team after 14. A few few rat bags in the team and sort of all <laughs> dispersed but um, yeah it does probably a lot but when I think about my junior footy I always think of Belmont as kind of, of home and um, yeah that's a good use there. Yeah and you did spend your younger years in Melbourne um, obviously it was like when you were younger but from what you can remember how was the experience in Melbourne? Uh, oh I love Melbourne, I, was, I came over when I was I think nearly 10 to Perth so I um, don't have a heap of memories but I didn't want to leave um, mm. when I was there. And, um, but once I got here, the weather was amazing, and yeah. um, you know, through sport you sort of meet meet friends, and it was a pretty quick transition for me, to be honest. Um, but yeah, um, played at Ashburn Junior Footy Club with Toby Green. Oh yeah. Um, came out of there, pretty better than I was, but um, yeah, it was sort of some some fond memories, but I don't have a heap of memories. Mm. Uh, so you got into the footy season from playing amateurs, or got into the AFL system from playing amateurs at Trinity Aquinas, mm. and then you went to. Perth under the recruitment system. Uh, would you say this um, journey is like quite uncommon for most players? 
took a long time. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it took the long way around, but um, oh, I wouldn't change it to be honest. I played yeah out of school. I wasn't sort of matured pretty late. Um, you know, didn't didn't start puberty till yeah probably late teens, and um, so like waffle footy, waffle colts wasn't really something I thought about or thought I was good enough, and I wasn't good enough at that stage. So I went and played amateur footy with um, at Trinity Aquinas. Had some, I was at South Perth, and a lot of boys there were playing. Went to Trinity, so they came here to training in South Perth and sort of invited us down to, to train there. Um, once we finished our junior footy, and my well, two two of the most enjoyable years of, of my footy career, just a. Um, a club that just brought everyone in. Felt like it was a cult, cult player. All yeah. the senior players just really brought us in and made it feel like a really club environment. And um, we had a really, really good team. So we won a premiership in my last year. And um, yeah, and then I think as I sort of matured and got a bit better in my footy and a bit more confidence, um, Perth sort of came and invited a few of us from that team down to train with them over pre-season. And yeah, sort of again took a bit of a long way around from there, but. Slow starting to the waffle system. Yeah. Would you urge younger players to like give it their all in whatever division or team they're playing in? Due to your experience, you know, um, getting picked up through the amateurs, would you really try and tell younger black people to just give it their all in whatever they're in? Oh, one thing I sort of always feel like I did. Um, my coaches or teammates might think otherwise, but I always felt like I had pretty good work ethic with my football or my cricket, whatever sport I was doing. I felt like I'd always um, try hard and try and improve. That was sort of all, something that I. Um, kind of sit comfortably feeling like I did so um, you know it wasn't an AFL it wasn't an aspiration or something I necessarily thought I'd get to but I just wanted to try and improve and, and get better so that would be the message to really anyone just work hard yeah work yeah. hard and try and improve enjoy it um, and yeah ride the ride the bumps because there's a few bumps along the way but of course um, <laughs> yeah <laughs> a few. yeah and you were picked up by Freo via um, trade after your good form in the 2010 waffle season mm-hmm. Um, would you say that if you hadn't performed well that season, the journey might have looked a little bit different for you? Uh, I would have stayed at Perth, yeah, it was definitely I was committed there. And, um, we, yeah, it was, a, it was a pretty long journey, to be honest with my waffle. I sort of got to, to Perth and played a bit of league footy when I first arrived. And, and then for two years, I really played mostly reserves footy. I was half forward, couldn't really get much of the ball. And, um, and then went down back, and the sort of footy became a little bit um, so easier, but I, so just yeah, found found my niche down there, and um, yeah, I was really committed to Perth. We only won two games that year, so it was a bit of a grind. But <laughs> um, yeah, I was willing to yeah to stick it out again. Just trying to feel like it was a had a bit unfinished business there, yeah. and um, if things didn't work out with AFL, um, but yeah, it did. So I was, uh, yeah. I was pretty happy to to push on with my duty. And with your debut in Fremantle, that was in um, round nine against Port Adelaide. Um, you guys ended up winning that game by 52 points. Um, sort of explain the feeling you had when you first stepped foot on the ground for your first AFL game. Uh, well, I was a sub, so I'd, yeah. I've missed um, a fair bit. of got injured in the last pre-season game. Uh, hurt my knee, missed three months. So I um, came in uh, as a sub back then, and it was pretty good. Like We were nine goals up or something in three-quarter time, so it was actually there was less nerves than I would have had if maybe if I started the game um, but it was yeah it was, it was an amazing feeling I've had my family all all there I don't see my dad a lot but he flew over from the Gold Coast to the game had my mum my partner uh, my brother like they were all at the game yeah. so it was a pretty cool week and um, yeah had a good win and just got the power rate in the eyes after the, the game so it was a yeah, pretty sweet sweet memory yeah who would you say as you as a player who was like the one that like who was the toughest player to play against like which one? Which player did you get nervous to come across or anything like the player? Uh, well, I used to get pretty nervous anyway, so I didn't yeah. have to <laughs> necessarily um, be a direct match up. But my first year, I, um, I was pretty attacking yeah. half back, and I think Mark Harvey was coaching, sort of wanted me to, to learn a bit more defensive craft. So he gave me a few um, midfield assignments. So, um, Tag Nick Del Santo um, my first year, um, played, a, played a little bit on Chris Judd. Um, so I had some, some tough matchups, and yeah, that made me nervous. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, as I went on, sort of Adam Goods, Rory Sloan, Dan Hanabry, they were kind of the ones oh, that um, get me. Generally, Stephen Hill was the best winger, so he would get the lightest matchup, and I was sort of a bit more you work with like winger, so I'd try and play their best winger. So uh, generally, get those matchups. And I think one thing about um, about preparing and playing on the good players is you try and get your preparation best you can it gives you sort of 
at least when the siren goes and the ball's about to bounce, you feel like you've done everything you can to prepare for that game. So I try to prepare well and then trust that all the work you've done and the, the prep, the you know, the study that you do on the other players and the other team that, that'll hold you in the best stead to perform. Similar question to so what team did you always look forward to playing against? Like what team did you like circle on the calendar when the fixtures <laughs> came out? Um, oh, not Hawthorne, they used to always beat us. I um, <laughs> used to had a, had a number of pretty much my whole career. Um, odd? No, I can't answer that. The Derbys maybe? I, I love the Yeah, you yeah, yeah, do love the Derbys. They're pretty cool games to play in. And I was a net West Coast fan uh, mm-hmm. as a junior, yeah. like as growing up. And, Used to love, love watching the derbies, and yeah. back then West Coast used to win most of them, so <laughs> they were pretty good to watch. But um, yeah, I love, I love derbies, and although you, the, the the bigger games, as they describe, or yeah. finals, they, they give you the most sort of nerves yeah, and anxiety. Absolutely. They're the ones that you you do yeah. love playing. You reflect back on your after you finish playing, and you know playing in finals or you know Friday night games. They're the ones that stick out. They're the ones yeah. that you love yeah. playing. In, so. Yeah. And you did mention Hawthorne, um, where you faced them in the 2013 Grand Final. Um, you actually kicked the first goal for Frio in that game. Um, explain that feeling, sort of kicking. Oh, that. We, yeah, we, it was the second quarter, so we were, we'd kicked a few points leading to that. Um, oh yeah, I don't know. It was sort of all happened. The whole game itself went pretty quick. Um, I remember getting the ball, and and I wanted to, like I, I wanted to kick it, like yeah. I mean, which is a, probably a good sign. I, you know, really wanted to take the kick and. Um, Trust me. Trust all the practice you do during the week, but yeah, um, yeah it was cool. It was, yeah, a moment that obviously a lot of people surprisingly remember um, <laughs> that. Um, yeah, yeah it, was a, it was a cool day. Unfortunately, we didn't win, but yeah, just, just I was at the, actually my very first grand final the year before. Oh yeah, when Sydney played um, Hawthorne, and I remember going, "Gee, this is well, uh, as a kid, it's grand final day." Like you, just, uh, you pinch yourself when you're actually out there and get an opportunity uh, yeah. to play it. And um, throughout your career, like something that we like asking our athletes is who they sort of looked up to, someone that's helped them on a grounded level, um, whether that's family, friends, I'm sure there's a long list, but if you could sort of narrow it down. I always come back to my mum. Yeah, she was a, a really big influence on me growing up. Um, sort of, I mean, most of, well, basically my whole, most of my early life was, you know, single mum and she raised my brother and I. And, um, yeah, she, she gave us a bit of autonomy, like let us explore things we liked and make mistakes and she wasn't, certainly wasn't a helicopter parent, but there was always like love and support and she'd encourage us to, um, to pursue our dreams and so I always, always think about her first and foremost as a really good mentor and um, you know, someone who always had, had my back yeah. through some pretty, some, some tough days. Um, and then probably in a footy sense, um, like Simon Easter, I talked about him a little bit when I first got to Perth, and like I used to, I used to cop it pretty bad at Perth. Um, yeah. some, some, some of our fans, and like I was, he, he sort of backed me in. So he played me a lot of games when I probably my form wasn't great. So he just had, he just saw something in me that sometimes you don't even see in yourself. So he just encouraged me to keep keep pursuing it, and um, so yeah, he, he he was there sort of through my early period of Perth when I wasn't playing or playing all that well. So I, I credit him. Probably it was pretty easy just to, to go away and go back to Trinity Corns where I had a pretty good network and yeah. there was no pressure, but he, he sort of encouraged me to yeah. start that journey. So. so Sometimes you need that, like someone who sees something that you don't see, like in whatever you're playing. I think it's really important. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you guys have some days in behind the mic where you yep. need someone just to give you the <laughs> email sure. saying, keep doing what you're doing. So, 100%. Yeah, we all need it. Definitely. Yeah. When you were younger, watching like players on TV, and when you got older, a bit like, did you model your game after any AFL players? Um, I think as a kid, you always like, like you, you were a bit younger than me, but like Peter Matera and Andrew McLeod, I loved, loved watching them growing up. They were just guys who took the game on and they were exciting to watch. And um, so I think you you do try and in some way model your game yeah. on certain players. Um, you know, I was a forward, like kicking goals over my head, so I was any forward that was had a bit of flair or a player that had a bit of flair, I sort of gravitated towards them but um, as you sort of evolve and you, you learn your own style um, yeah, yeah this is, you, you watch games and you go oh, that's that's sort of something that within my skill set that you might try and build into your game but um, yeah, not, not really not too much I guess yeah, that's and obviously being involved in um, Frio as you are now um, can you give us a bit of insight on what sort of goes on behind the scenes like with the mental health sort of stuff like um, the people that work on behind the scenes with the clubs, do you think nowadays it's becoming more focused on by AFL players with the mental health 
side of things? Yeah, it's a, we put a lot of resources, AFL puts um, a lot of resources into um, the health of our athletes and um, yeah, mental health is something that yeah, we obviously will put a lot of resources in. We've got a um, full-time psychologist, um, we've got a wellbeing um, Angie Bain has come on as full time in the wellbeing space. Um, AFLPA is always um, external resources for players and staff to um, to reach out. So um, yeah, I think one thing I've noticed is players and staff are a lot more open. We try and be open and share and um, show a bit of vulnerability, and it's it's much more accepted I think in today's society when when somebody's struggling that they can they can put their hand up and without ridicule. Or, but it's still an area definitely yeah. that we need to continue to um, put more time and effort into. And, yeah. A bit of a random question now. I love random questions. <laughs> <laughs> what like what does an average diet look like for an AFL yeah. player? What an average. What do you reckon it is? Oh. <laughs> no fast food. No, <laughs> no, 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 no zinger boxes. No <laughs> zinger boxes. No. No, it, it does vary. I mean, first year players um, come in and they're. A lot of them are encouraged to eat, try and eat more, yeah, depending on what your body type is, but yeah. you know, your long, young, lean ruckman are there to sort of almost get over it at some times just to try and get the food in. And pre-season is like big days, big yeah. sessions out in the heat, so they do, you generally eat a lot more, a lot of carbs, yeah, you don't eat many zinger boxes. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of carbs, um, yeah, full-time dietitian who, who sort of monitors that, but yeah, um, yeah we try and, um, proteins and carbs. And, yeah. Generally, the, the two main sources, um, and then in season it's a little bit a little bit less probably because you're not training as much. Yeah, you, you lead into games. You obviously eat your passes and your carbs and your rices, dishes um, leading yeah. into games. But it's very tailored. To, yeah, to, to answer your question, some guys are um, different just different body types yeah. that, that need to eat less. Unfortunately, I was pretty lucky. I got to eat most things that I that I wanted. Yeah. Metabolism, so I was able to sort of put on. If I didn't eat much, I'd sort of lose a bit of weight, so yeah. I sort of had to try and eat more than most others. Yeah. And now going on to some of the um, art, what well, you've done after your career in the AFL, um, this was sort of still during it, but in 2016, you were part of the premiership team for Peel. Mm -hmm. um, what was that experience like winning the grand final? Oh, it was a, yeah, it was a, in a pretty disappointing like, professional year, I guess, as an AFL player, like, it was one of my, um, yeah, I'll, I'll take so much out of it. You loved it, uh, most fulfilling years really, because it was um, a lot of our, a lot of that group that had played through sort of 2012 to 2015 were um, were sort of heading on the way out. So we I remember sort of mid year we sort of started to we gathered together and said let's really try and get the most out of it. We all wanted to play AFL, obviously, but um, if we weren't playing AFL, we wanted to play really well at Peel. Um, drive a really good culture there and win a flag. That was kind of what we yeah. what we sort of um, set about doing. So um, yeah, the, the Peel lads that came through that journey and um, Camp Shepherd who coached, um, yeah, we just, we were all aligned and it was a really powerful kind of back end of the year where we, we all sort of, we all signed up for it and we, were, we wanted to win it. So I, me I remember when the AFL season finished, it was something 12 maybe, well, I was probably more than that, maybe 15 or 16 players that were trained on. Yeah. And yeah, we we're just really tight, really connected, and um, yeah, it was a pretty pretty special feeling to win and um, feel like you walk away from the year, you know, out of a job, but you win a premiership, and yeah. it felt it felt pretty good. Mm. And shortly after, um, the following year, actually, um, you played at GWS, and although it was short, um, Very how short. <laughs> yeah, Very short. How, how was the experience like? <laughs> that, um, that um, maybe the sort of what goes on behind the scenes compared yeah. to Frio. Uh, oh, I was pretty like I was pretty surprised to get it. Another opportunity. I remember when the season finished, it uh, won obviously with Peel and so sort of Matt DeBoer and I were, you know, best mates. We just we just started training and sort of thought we'll be ready. Hopefully, someone calls. He was twenty five, maybe, so he was much more likely than I was to get an opportunity. But we just trained and yeah, like through a bit of luck, divine intervention, whatever it was, we ended up both at Giants together. And our partners were best friends, so it was it works well. Then. Yeah, it just yeah. worked well. And we thought let's just let's just do it. Well, let's go. And, and um, my wife, yeah, she, she called it yes year, so she was just like, let's just go after it and like, do things on the weekend. So um, it was a completely different environment, which I, which I liked. Um, you know, I'd sort of done the same thing at Freo for a long time, and um, GWS were, 
we just had a different way of training, different way of um, doing the gym, which was just a different environment. Um, no one's from Sydney, so they really made emphasis on the family side of things and bringing people in and um, trying to make it an enjoyable program. Um, and Sydney, no one knows who you are. I love that, just to be able to feel like yeah. you become, I don't know, like you, you do, you do get a bit self-conscious maybe in yeah. Perth and yeah. people sort of, you know, probably don't help myself in my hair, but you do, it was nice to go there and just feel like you could just be yourself and not have people mm-hmm. knowing who you are. So um, all those things made it a, a good year. Um, yeah, didn't, we did, didn't, I think I played four games, got injured in yeah. round one and missed a bit of gap in the middle of footy, but I'd still look at that. I'd do it a you know, hundred times over. Met some great people there and, and um, yeah, sort of realised like at the end, like, yeah, it was, each one more year out, but it was like a, I felt like that was we got the most out of myself. Yeah. Like that was that was a good end point. I was happy to sort of walk away from the game. I didn't have any bitterness in my mouth. It was like that was a good, yeah. you know, enjoyed my career. And was ready to move on. Yeah, I can imagine you not getting recognised because Sydney over there is all about rugby, and mm-hmm. like Sydney and Queensland, all about their rugby mainly. That's yeah. what they call fo- footy. Yeah, so. uh, yeah, it's on every every time you go you know, <laughs> to, to a restaurant or put the TV on. It's always it's rugby and. Um, I thought I didn't didn't get the rugby bug over there. It sort of didn't really have much time for it. Went to a state of origin game, so I sold out a little bit. But um, yeah, it was, um, yeah, they love it over there. I don't think they turn up to the games so yeah. though, which is a bit of a shame. But yeah. so you you did do your hamstring early um, in that GWS game that took you out for like ten to twelve weeks. You reckon? When you did your hamstring, you kind of had to call it maybe your career, or like, and if you never did it, do you reckon you could have kept on playing and had a would have dominated a bit of longer? Yeah, would have dominated. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> no, I actually remember going to Giants and remember the like pre season, I was like, whole like me and Matt looked at each other, like, oh my god, these guys are like just weapons, they were like so fast. And we're like, yeah, I guess what we our competitive advantage was, um, you know, we feel like we were pretty professional, we, um, we were able to great the game plan and next like so things like that we, we could sort of add, add strengths in that way but um, yeah we managed to get through the summer Giants Ge- Ge- team was pretty we were pretty healthy at that stage yeah. and so to get a game in round one sort of validated yeah. yes, a bit of like the reason to go and to feel like you had a bit more to give um, after coming back from injury I, was, I felt like I'd lost a little bit of pace and I remember the, my last game at played Richmond at MCG and it was I was tagging Sean Brigg on the wing and then he went to forward and I saw they threw me like they lost the tag and then they put me forward and it started raining and we were getting belted and I just remember going I think this is it I think this is where it ends <laughs> <laughs> it was just like a really sombering feeling like oh this is where it ends on the journey the rain, went, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick Lawson just belted me so um, yeah it was kind of <laughs> it wasn't a great finish but it was yeah, yeah just reaffirmed that yeah, um, yeah probably wasn't going to get back to the to the great heights that I once achieved. Yeah. <laughs> and you returned back to Perth um, after that and became a runner at Freo. Um, what sort of made you want to do that? Uh, well, I was doing teaching at the time, so uh, I was sort of thinking I'd go down the teaching path and Giants actually um, offered me a, a role to stay there and um, do some coaching there. And then, so I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do, and then I was speaking to Freo sort of back end of the year, and they mentioned their Next Generation Academy was, um, they were looking for a coach who could um, help run that program, and I guess it lined with teaching, working with you know young young athletes who are driven to get better, and uh, a lot of stuff in the community which I enjoyed doing. So um, that kind of ended up being the pull for to come home and to to go down that path. So the running was. I actually wanted to play footy. I wanted to keep playing, go back to Perth and play yeah. there, but the running was sort of tied into the role, so I was a bit, actually, was and ahhing whether I'd actually take the academy role, but I'm really glad I did. And I sort of got to travel up to the Kimberley, um, do a lot of, you know, work with a lot of, um, you know, yeah. school age kids, but then the yeah. elite talent program, working with some of the guys that end up, you watch them come through and end up in an AFL list was, was pretty rewarding. Yeah, yeah like, because. I'm over at the Nigna Academy over at West Coast and like playing the next gen is, is always like the best time I'm always yeah, yeah, cool, so yeah. it's always fun watching that. Yeah, play it was because, awesome. Yeah, you get yeah. to bring it through the facilities and yeah, run those games against yeah. um, that new academy and yeah, you can see the kids like, you know, for that day if you like, yeah. You know, <laughs> got the jumper on and yeah, it's a pretty special so I'd love to have been able to do it when I was a young fellow yeah. to be able to 
um, see other kids do it was, was cool. Yeah, and back to the running thing, um, what would what sort of did the um, routine on game day look like as a runner from like the start <laughs> during the game, yeah. sending out messages, that oh, sort of stuff? It was a long day as a runner um, because you don't really have a, I mean, I didn't, a lot of runners now do, there are a lot of a sports scientist or um, development coach or whoever it is, but I was kind of, that was it, I was doing the academy and then I'd come and do the running, so yeah. it was a long two hours before the game, sort of. <laughs> Roll my hammies out and just make sure that I, you know, was looking after them. Maybe I'd sit in the meeting, obviously, and take any notes to make sure that I wasn't across the game plan for the day. But um, it wasn't a lot of prep work, to be honest. You yeah, just sit in the meetings during the week and make sure you were across that and get around the players, get busy and trying to help them kick footies at them or whatever they needed. But yeah, it wasn't a, wasn't a ton of prep. Would yeah. you like? I was always wondering, like, would you ever fight if the coach gave you a message? Would you ever forget it? And sometimes just running out to the <laughs> players or anything? Uh, yeah, 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 you do. Um, generally, there was like, if it was like four players that would come off yeah. and you'd run out and you remember three and that fourth one you couldn't remember, yeah. so you'd, you'd, the other three would start coming off and then you'd run to the, whoever the player was that was still yeah. standing there waiting for oh, the yeah. rotation, oh, who, um, who, who were you on for? And they'd say like, oh, yeah, you know, five, you'd, oh, I'll go tell them again. So then you'd just pretend like you're going to oh, go yeah, tell them yeah. again. So you'd, you'd run and try and... Um, run that message out but yeah you do you do forget a little bit um sometimes you write a notepad when i started i was like writing all yeah. these notes and trying to not remember by the end you sort of get and they change the rules as well you didn't have to run as oh, many yeah. messages so yeah. um it was a little bit easier i've got a shocking memory so i did forget a little bit <laughs> um another random question that we have uh, here so you were nominated for mark of the year quite a few times was i uh yeah you were we, we came across a couple of clips that um that we came across when we were looking on the Freer website. But um, would you say marking was one of your strengths throughout your career? Um, it was when I was little. I used to try and take hangs all the time. It was, it was almost bashed out of me at Freer. I had to be a bit more of a conservative player. But uh, yeah, I always, liked, always felt I was pretty reasonably athletic and um, yeah, could mark it a little bit. So yeah, I tried yeah. To, to take a couple. And al- although you didn't win um, Mark of the Year, we did <laughs> come across another video. Yeah, I need one now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, back in 2014, don't know. Um, this was at a Scorchers game. Uh, you took a scream yeah, on at the yeah, ground. Um, <laughs> a bit of a classic catch. Yeah. How was that feeling? Well, I was like, it, there's only two things I'm really known for, and the one's the catch and the goal of the grand final. So I was wondering which one might come first. Yeah. Um, if you missed one, I was going to bring it up. But yeah, that was uh, that was a cool. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. I remember going to cricket with um, Ryan Crowley and Matt DeBoer, and we were walking into the ground and. I was obviously you know, a big strapping man. He was, you know, we talked about if a ball came into the crowd, that what was the etiquette? Do we like let one take it or? Yeah. He's like, no, nah, no, nah, we just whoever's there, best position, just best man wins, kind of thing. <laughs> so he sort of he set the tone, and then yeah, obviously as the, the game unfolded, a big bomb went high, and <laughs> we just sat there and it looked like it looked like it was coming close, but it went. Oh. It was a high ball. It was a high yeah. ball. Yeah. <laughs> You got footage, just to make sure you run that through. But um, yeah, like it was a high ball, but we didn't think, oh, what are the odds? And then as it got closer, oh, we'll just get up just in case. And then as it was getting closer, it became abundantly clear, clear that Krause was in the pole position. It was going to be his catch, but he was on the bank and it was just slanting down. Yeah. So I was in behind him, so I just shimmied his hips <laughs> uh, down the hill a little bit and then managed to, to take the catch. And yeah, I think I kissed the ball and carried on like a bit in full, but. <laughs> Yes, it was actually pretty, yeah, pretty funny, funny day. The phone, phone has never probably been as hot as it was that day. <laughs> <laughs> um, and going back to the Generation Academy, um, sort of what do you look for in a player coming through that academy? Just a bit of insight for the younger ones watching. Oh, I mean, really, it's participation until the age of you know, 15, 16, really. We just want kids playing the game. And then you do funnel it to more talent and um, see who potentially can take the next step. And... Um, a lot of it now is oh, is about character. Are they are they able to handle the, the rigors of an AFL lifestyle? Um, do they want to improve? Um, yeah, and then there's the talent aspect. Do they have an AFL attribute or a couple of AFL attributes that you need to be um, on a list? So they're, they're kind of the things you start looking at. You get to know them pretty well. The, the families, um, the recruiters do a, a lot of work behind the scenes. It's, going through the process with families and schools and teachers and um, coaches and stuff like that. But 
Um, you do start to get de- develop a pretty good understanding of the character of the player and whether they can handle it and um, yeah, whether they can got the, the talent to, to get there. It doesn't always work, and it's a, a again the program set up to try and um, bring more multicultural and indigenous players into the game for, for longer periods. And um, I think we're still trying to continue to develop that and keep keep players in the game for longer because they're the most exciting to watch. Them. A bit biased, but yeah, I think yeah. I, think you'd be able to I would agree. Yeah. Definitely agree with that. So Frio, they had a really good season last year. I don't think many people expected it. Brayshaw played well. Who are the some of the players do you reckon to, to look out for this yeah, season? Super coach coming up. Yeah, super coach, yeah. Last unit for the fantasy. Yeah. Um, oh, those those guys you mentioned before sort of still progressing um, yeah. pretty well. Luke Jackson's been a really oh, good yeah. addition for us. He's um, a really hard worker and. Um, yeah, he's very talented as well. Um, and then, oh, I'm going to do the back line, so I love, like, Hayden Young, Heath yeah. Chapman, and them all kind of the guys that I love seeing doing well. Jordy Clark, um, Brandon Walker there, sort of feel like they're going to hopefully develop again. Yeah, I think we've still got a pretty youthful list, and, yeah. um, you know, touch wood if we can stay healthy, then, yeah, we, we hope that we can we can achieve, you know, a couple, a couple of spots better than we did last year. I think, yeah, it'll be exciting to see um, how Frio do this year, but um, obviously a bit bi- you, obviously, you might be a bit biased with our Frio, but what about West Coast? Any opinions <laughs> on uh, how they might do this year? <laughs> uh, oh, I think they'll do better. They'll definitely yeah. go modern and do better than they did last year. I think they everything that maybe could have gone wrong from did last year, didn't have any luck with injuries, and, um, you know, so I think they're, all reports there in a better spot than they were last year, so I think they'll be. They're hard to beat. They're hard to beat over here in Perth, and um, you know, although they've got a bit of an older list, I think they've, yeah. they've still got some pretty good weapons. So I think if they stay pretty healthy, they'll be. Um, yeah, they'll be around the finals mark. But you know, time will tell. As long as we've beat them a couple of times, a weeks, we'll all be good. Yeah. And for the people watching and listening, um, what advice would you give to you know younger athletes who? have aspirations to make the AFL? Yeah, I get asked this, I mean, I certainly did when doing the academy around young players and um, advice, and I've always sort of, depending on age now, they just enjoy it, because um, if you do get there, it's, it's demanding, and it's, um, you never enjoy your footy or your soccer, whatever sport it is, as much as you do when you're a kid. It's sort of, sort of almost the golden years of your life when there's, the pressure doesn't come, the scrutiny. Um, so just enjoy it, number one, and sort of mentioned earlier but just try and get better just yep. um when you train um trying to get better try not to waste sessions um awareness in your game things that you do really well i think your weapons are the things that elevate any player to the next level is the things they're good at um, everyone's quick to tell you what you're not good at but i think you know a good understanding of what makes you you some players it's speed some players it's leadership and um some players they're just tough and they you know every time you train or you play you've got to bring out those things that just make you special so I always try and preach those things and um, keep working on the areas of your game that you need to bump up it's not really you know, sometimes it's just as simple as that some good advice um, now just before we go one question we always ask um, at the end is uh, now this one is a little bit different for you but okay. if you could be any athlete in the world who would it be and why mm. um, it can be past or present and it doesn't have to be in the AFL mm. We get many different answers yeah. for this one, but uh, yeah. Has Usain Bolt been mentioned? I uh, don't think anyone has said Usain Bolt. No. I feel like to, like, I mean, I'm talking in his prime, not Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably of taking, he's probably still runs under 10, but um, <laughs> I feel like that would be pretty cool. Yeah. To be able to look at anyone well. in the world and go, I'm far, I'm far so you, You're yeah. in school when you're like in prime, yeah. so yeah. like, <laughs> first thing you do, you could be fast, like, you know, that kind of, you, you fast to size them up. I reckon it would be pretty cool yeah. to be able to go, like, yeah, I'm fast. You so well. Maybe you say well. That's a good one. All right, well, that about wraps it up. Um, thank you for coming on. We really appreciate it. Um, good way to start the footy episodes again. So, um, yeah, thanks again. Um, everyone watching, uh, probably watching this on YouTube, this will be on Spotify and Apple Music as well. Go and follow Tendai. And, yeah, we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Thank you.